first and last step, and through the power of the Spirit, stand one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just come on your back, please. Thank you. Okay. Good evening once again, everybody. Great to see you. Uh, so we appreciate you attending tonight's uh, budget work session for 2023 and 2024. So we're, the village is scheduled to adopt the 2023 and 2024 budget at the annual organizational meeting, which will be on this coming Monday, April 3rd. As the budget process is coming to an end, I'd like to once again thank Irene Wu and the finance department Ralph Swazi and all the department heads who contributed so much to help create this year's village budget. Tonight we have the presentation of changes as well as the final budget. At this time, I'd like to introduce Irene Wu so that she can conduct tonight's budget work session. And I ask those in the audience and on Zoom to please hold your questions until uh, all the presentations are concluded. Ms. Wu, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so we're waiting to get the uh, presentation so the okay. viewers on Zoom can, can go along with it. Sure. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so tonight's uh, budget presentation will focus on the on the few changes that were discussed during the previous work sessions um, and were changes that were brought up by the department heads. Uh, and then we'll review the, the final budget that will uh, be adopted on Monday. So we'll start with the operating budget. Um, one of the changes that was discussed during the budget presentation was the uh, February 21 BOT approval of executive raises. So those raises were uh, incorporated into the revised budget by department. Um, so you'll see those changes reflected there um, under February 21 BOT. Um, the Recreation Department also requested uh, some title changes to uh, three laborers, from laborers to tree pruners, and one tree pruner to senior tree pruner. And the impact of those uh, title changes is about $23,254. Um, Village Administrator Swazi also requested a, uh, an increase in the superintendent of DPW salary to match the salary of the superintendent of the water department. Uh, so we're, we're seeing that change. And he also requested $10,000 for additional training for trenching and shoring training for some of the employees. Uh, there was a, a late change that came about, I was uh, told about, um, and Mr. Swazi will speak a little bit about that one. That's the one highlighted in yellow, and it's for $31,000. Yes, the, I'm sorry. So the, the part-time help was uh, accidentally reduced by myself when I prepared the budget. We do have five part-timers who work regularly really as part of the street maintenance division area. Uh, one of them works in the dump area and the other four are weekend uh, watchmen who uh, support the people who use the dump, who also respond to police call outs for uh, assistance. Uh, so they're, they're four part-timers who rotate and they also do holidays. So I just want to bring this back up to the right level. That's what $31,000 for. Yes, sir. Anybody else? So we have, uh, on, we always have a night watchman. We always, we, the, the yard is supported uh, with uh, three shifts. And on weekends, we have, have part-timers who, who uh, keep an eye on the place. They also assist uh, residents who use the dump, check on permits and stuff like that. Uh, they also respond to any police call outs, whether it be a tree limb down or, uh, so they, they watch the yard and they respond. So that's, uh, 
to, to this board and to support Swan because we work certain amount of hours each week. And we also uh, work on holidays. So is this an additional person? Is it additional hours? What is it? This is, well, these were these are existing. Okay. What I did was when I did the budget, I had shorted it accidentally. So I'm just restoring it to what it should be. This is not a change from last year's budget. It's just bringing it back up to the same level as before. Okay, okay. so it's an error on your part. You error on my part. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And the next item is the net impact to uh, the the transfer to capital projects, the change to those, which I'll go uh, into in a little bit more detail on the next slide. Um, and so the net impact of all, all these changes in the general fund for all the departments is the increases and decreases comes out to $271,594. That total amount will be funded through contingency, so it will have no impact on the tax levy. So the contingency budget goes from 1.5 million to 1.228 million. The water pool and tennis funds also are seeing slight increases on the salary line and this is a, a result of the, the salary allocations from some of the executive team. Their raises um, will be allocated to the enterprise fund. So just so that you're aware, the enterprise funds uh, does have allocations for certain employees from the general fund. Percentage of our time is allocated to the enterprise funds that's you know uh, to account for the total operating expenses of the funds. Are there any questions on this slide? I mean, just explain the enterprise fund again. I didn't quite. The enterprise funds. Yeah. yeah. So the enterprise funds, uh, their operating revenues are to cover their operating expenses. Um, so you have the pool fund. Their revenues cover all their expenses are supposed to, the tennis fund and the water fund. Um, certain employees, the village administrator, uh, finance, myself and my deputy treasurer, um, certain payroll uh, employees, a percentage of our time is allocated to the enterprise funds. They're supposed to cover all operating expenses. You will see under the enterprise funds, there's benefits and taxes that are allocated, insurance costs, you know, all expenses related to running that enterprise fund is allocated to them. Um, so you'll see certain um, employees' salaries allocated to those funds as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the next slide shows the uh, changes for capital projects. Um, under the general fund, um, the, there, were a, there was a project, the Toll House Roof Replacement Project, that was originally in the 2023-24 fiscal year. Um, and Mr. Swazi uh, decided to defer that project a year into the 24-25 year. Um, and then in exchange, uh, brought forward a project, Village Hall Break Room, to do improvements to that from the 24-25 year into the 23-24 year. So he just flipped those projects in terms of fiscal years. Um, when you heard the library presentation, um, the director re requested an additional $20,000 for technology. So the sum of these changes is actually a reduction of $15,000. And that's why you're seeing a credit of $15,000 on the previous slide. Since these are projects that are funded through taxes, the amount of the tax allocation for capital projects will be reduced by this $15,000. Uh, for the water fund, um, during the presentations, these two items were requested, in adding uh, $1.6 million to the water main improvement project to include paving of the roads afterwards, as well as uh, a, a vehicle for the superintendent of water. Um, this other item highlighted in yellow is uh, also a new item that came up this week. Um, Mr. Blake uh, uh, notified us that he received updated quote from the from a vendor, and so the price for the this project seems to have gone up, up a bit. So it's we're budgeting another hundred thousand dollars for this project. So I had sent an email to the board uh, a couple of days ago, identifying um, another capital project um, with the new AOP system and the reliance on the granulated, activated carbon filter vessels. 
those vessels, uh, the media that does the remediation of the vault, so organic compounds to treat the water, over time they deteriorate depending on the level of contamination and the volume of water passes through them. Mr. Carey, upon looking at the budget, I uh, uh, thought it would be a good idea if we include, put money in the budget for the outer years so uh, we have the ability to trans uh, replace the media as needed in these vessels. So I earmarked $100,000 for 24, 25 out through year five. It doesn't impact this budget, but I want to voice over for the public so they're aware that it will show up in the budget book, even though there's no expense in this year's budget for it. I have a question on the toll house roof replacement. What was the reason for deferring that a year? When we were putting the budget together, um, when we were trying to come up with a, uh, a price for that uh, replacement, and we had not gotten any vendor quotes, so we guesstimated it in the 70,000 range just based on the size of the roof. But Mr. Giovanello had reached out, and he reached, reached a very high quote of 185. Uh, we don't think that's the price it's going to be, but uh, we think the roof can hold in the year it's not leaking out, so we'd rather just defer it and get some pricing uh, for next year. Okay. But I guess a question though, so you said we're talking 70, we got a 185, is 70 realistic? No, the, so the 70 that in the difference column that's showing here, I, I don't have a number, so. No, but I'm just, what I'm, I'm questioning this, right? We use the 70 as a placeholder, right? This is budgeting 101. Yeah. But if it's not a realistic number, we should have a more realistic number there when we start talking about it. Right, so are you putting anything in the budget for next year? That's correct. So we do a five-year plan, and it's just for forecasting purposes. Next year, of course, we do the 24-25 budget. We will get more realistic numbers. So we can, in the 24-25 year, change this number from 70 to the 185 to reflect numbers that we're hearing this year. Okay. And next year, we will get better numbers as well. Okay, noted. Thank you. The um, water main improvements, it says added paving. Does that relate to one specific project or are we doing far more projects? No, this re it represents the, the Meadow Street. When I did my presentation on water, I mentioned that the paving of Meadow Street, uh, it's a very long road. It also it is part of the water main pro project. When we do a water main project, of this magnitude, we also repave the road and we charge that to the water main project or the water department versus the regular road paving program. Meadow Street has been very long. It also, this particular project includes Grove Street, um, um, Commander and Lindbergh, and Meadow Street itself is it's probably about 15 to 18 feet wider than more, most of the roads in that area of town. So it's a lot of asphalt. In particular though, west of Washington Avenue, uh, around the railroad tracks, there are concrete panels uh, that are there that have, that have been repaired with asphalt in the past. So we either have to go all asphalt or all concrete. Uh, we can't raise the height of the roads. So we have to move them. That's about a half million dollars worth of work. So ordinarily, a road this size might be in the $1.1 million range. It's more of a $1.6 million range because of that particular uh, um, issue on the west side. And we have a train trestle there too, so we really can't raise the road. And the next slide shows a summary of the general fund capital projects. Uh, the two items in red are the items we spoke about, moving up the uh, break room, the village hall break room project, um, and increasing the library technology. So the sum of the projects being requested for the 23-24 uh, fiscal year is 16.849 million. Um, if all these projects were approved, uh, again, the amount that would be funded through taxes would be 4,155,000, and we would bond about 12.7 million. And that's from revenue already received from the taxes, correct? The 4 million? The 4 million represents uh, the amount that we would be raising in tax. Oh, raising. Right? So yeah. in the 23-24 fiscal year, if you look at the next page, <laughs> right, our 
the first line item, budget expense appropriations of $69,194,000. Yes. That $4 million is embedded in that $69 million, right? So we'd, we'd be raising $69 million um, in funding, not in taxes. If you look down uh, how we are funding the $69 million, it's through various sources. Um, this sheet shows two options. It shows option one was the original tentative budget that was presented. And option two shows if we were to fund the expense appropriations without raising taxes year over year. Um, so that would require um, a current year surplus of about 2.9 million, almost 3 million. To be moved over? To be uh, moved over to next year's, uh, to fund next year's budget. Right. As you know, when I started out the first budget presentation, this I discussed the current year forecast. Yes. We're forecasting to be about three, $3.2 million favorable to this year's budget. Mm -hmm. And so we're anticipating using three, almost $3 million of that to fund next year's operating budget. Okay. And therefore, the taxes will not be raised to the residents if that's moved over, correct? No, that's needed to be moved over um, in order to keep the taxes at 1.99%. So if you look at option one, we are using 2.99 of current year surplus. We're uh, estimating 11.8 million of other revenues. And, and again, this includes building department fees, recreation revenues, you know, other, other types of revenues, you know, licenses, permits, and all those types of things. Um, and this requires a tax levy increase of 1.99% to get us to $54,334,000. Uh, um, but option two says, you know, we're still utilizing current year surplus of 2.9 million. We're still raising about 11.8 million of other revenues. We're keeping the tax levy flat year over year at 0%, but that would require uh, the village to utilize about one point, you know, almost 1.1 million of existing surplus, existing reserves, right, right to fund next year's budget. Right. And so if we, use, if we use those reserves, that's what I was getting at. If we use those reserves, taxes will not be raised to the residents. Am I that's correct? correct. If yeah, that's, that's the option the board wants to take, we would uh, be utilizing existing surplus existing reserves to fund next year's budget and that's a little over a million dollars um and just as you know you had mentioned at one of the meetings uh the current surplus the village has is about 18 million a little over 18 million dollars um and we are again requesting seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of existing sur surplus to be moved to the termination reserves right i remember that yeah right so um, and this option would then request another million dollars to be moved over, okay. which would leave us at about sixteen and a half million dollars right. of reserves, which is still an ample, you know, amount. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, tonight, you know, the 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 point of tonight's meeting is to review these changes, agree on which changes are are, are moving forward, uh, which option. Uh, the, the board would like to take option one or two or any other option. Of course, percentage of tax levy increase could be any number, right? Um, whatever the board decides so that on Monday, the budget that's voted on is, is finalized. So we'll need to finalize that, that budget from Monday, Monday's meeting. If we could go back to the prior page that says 2023 to 24 capital projects. And then it says, if all projects approved, funding is proposed as follows. And what is the status of these projects? I mean, there's a number of projects that um, there's five or six projects that are indicated to be funded by bonds. And what's the status of those? Have those been voted on uh, by a prior board or? at a prior meeting, or is there just a continuing resolution for curbs and sidewalks and sewer repairs? Um, yeah, so the sidewalk repairs, road and paving repairs, um, sewer repairs, these are annual projects. So every year there's a list of roads that will be paved, um, uh, a list of sidewalks that will be repaired. Um, so this budget that you're seeing has not been approved. None of these projects have been approved by the board as of yet. 
So tonight, you will decide, you know, which, if any, or all of these projects the board wishes to move forward with so that we can incorporate that into our, our budget that will be adopted on Monday. So every year the board votes on that year's funding for roads, that year's funding for equipment. You know, some of these projects we see over and over again, equipment, road repairs, but most of these are new projects. But didn't we have a vote or did we just have a presentation on the Meadow Street drainage, which is listed here as bond 1.5 million? That was a presentation. That was a presentation, but it has not been voted on yet. In other words, if you, if you take that off, we will not be pursuing that project. We won't have the funding to do it. Mm. And that's different from the 1.6 that's on the prior page, the water main improvement. That's, that's, that's because the, the road is so long and the, we need the money to pave the road. Mm -hmm. But Charlie, along those lines of what you're talking about, you're 100% right. Uh, you know, we tried to get down to single digits on the capital projects. Ralph, we didn't get there, 11.8. But Mary, I would suggest whoever takes over finance the next uh, uh, board, really look at these pro projects, stay on top of these projects, because we do need to whittle this down, you know, moving forward. We've made great progress. We need to keep going on that. Thank you, Sari, and thank you for all the work you did on that. Happy to be here. But I understand that the things that say source taxes they would just become part of this year's budget. That's correct, and that's a proposal. So we're proposing to fund the ones that say taxes, fund it through taxes, the one that say bond, to bond these projects. You see these are the, the bigger dollar um, projects, right, that are, are, are proposed to be bonded. We right. typically and fund I about $4 million, $5 million a year in taxes for capital projects. Well, you, you say that, and what number do you throw out as the typical amount for bonding? Um, there is no typical amount. Anything over and above that, if there's a major project, would be bonded. See, I remember the presentation on the Meadow Street drainage. I don't remember the presentation on the 3.8 million fire training site. Was there a presentation? Yes, and um, no, I don't. Mean, I don't mean in the last few weeks. Oh, I remember it in the last few weeks. I mean, was it? Was there a board of trustees meeting where we were shown different things in connection with this fire training site? Um, the I believe the fire department went through all the different components, and it's in the budget book. I'm not sure the different components that make up the 3.8 million. Do you have your? No, no, I, I remember. I remember doing it from the book okay. recently, but I don't remember. There, there has not been a presentation to the board of the training site. It's been talked about. It was talked about last budget year, um, basically. And you haven't you haven't seen the diagram. Basically, it's taking the dump area and moving the existing recycling area north and putting concrete down for a base and putting the new building blocks for the fire training facility, these uh, trailers. No, I remember that discussion. And I remember how there's 1.5 or 1.7 or something that's already somewhere for the concrete base. I remember that. And putting this 3.8 on that gets you to 5.5. But what I don't remember is some presentation analogous to Meadow Street drainage, which I feel like I heard a lot about. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So Trustee Kelly, so uh, the fire department buildings, Mr. Baroni, before he moved over to DPW, have spent the last year designing a layout, preparing, you know, a final drawing plans, meeting with uh, numerous vendors, getting pricing, 
all the various steps it takes to get to a certain point in a project. We're now at the funding stage just to allow us to get to the next step to make that presentation, to sit down with vendors and say, okay, look, you know, based on the in-house in designs, based on the design of the site itself, what we're looking to accomplish from a training perspective, what do we need for the department? Once we have funding in place, we can finalize the plans to present to the board. That's why we're asking for it to be put into the budget tonight, because otherwise we have to wait another year to move with this project along. And is it, is it at that point that there'll be a presentation, which I have not had, on the reason for the necessity for this, the reason it has to be here, the reason we can't use any facilities that are in neighboring localities or in the county or are operated by other governmental entities? Is it then that we'll get that presentation? Sure, so we can present that as well. We've had several conversations with several trustees throughout this process just to keep everybody in the loop as best we can. We can absolutely sit down and <coughs> present all the details as to why we feel this project's necessary to move forward. And happily answer any questions you may have about the project as it proceeds. And yes, there was a, before Trustee Kelly came on board, they, they did give a presentation to the board, the fire committee, fire safety committee, and then they had a town meeting as well. Yeah. So but Trustee, I think, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna, Trustee Kelly, just, just just to make sure there's no confusion on the bonded projects, um, if you okay the budget with this project in here and subsequently there's a presentation and you abandon it for some other choice or you change it, the, the, the project isn't bonded until we can decide to move forward with it. And even then it won't, won't be bonded until you need to uh, pay a bill. So, uh, so passing it in the budget doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be spent, especially since you haven't seen the presentation yet. Yes, to that point, uh, the bond resolutions have to come to the board for approval before we move forward with it. So, and then, Irene, if you could just clarify for me, on the next page, the word reserve is used, the word current sur surplus is used. It's fair to say that the current surplus has nothing to do with the 18 million. The 18 million is what's denominated on this page as reserve and pulling one point something out of it uh, to avoid any tax increase. That's correct. So current surplus is current year surplus. So we are estimating, we're forecasting to be about 3.2 million favorable this year. So that's what we're uh, pulling from this year's I kind of leftover funding. So we're using that for next year. Yeah. But to Paul Blake's question, um, the 75,000, are you, I mean, you talked to us last time and looking at things that come down all over the village. Are you comfortable that that's enough given the number? I mean, I think you gave us a number of between two, between 100 and 400 per tree. We're looking at probably another 400 ashes that are gonna come down plus miscellaneous other trees that may come down. So it sounds like the total trees that are gonna come down are about 500, but at like $200 a tree, 75,000 bucks, it's gonna be a thin margin here if we're off. Well, we're not gonna be taking down 400 trees in one year. Yeah. It's a total of 400 trees we we probably are looking at around this year we took 114 we're probably going to be in, in that neighborhood and based on the prices that we're seeing for trees now i'm comfortable with the 75,000. i think further clarification on the surplus it's, it's a uh, the combined surplus is uh 21.5 million and then you're taking that money out and then you're say, taking 750 for uh, uh, fund term for the termination funding and then it brings it down to 18450 correct and then it goes down to 15460 taking the 2000 the 3 3 million out 
So the 21, I guess you're saying 18, starting at the top when you're starting the with 18 the, yeah, because today, it's from this year at and the, the end of yeah. May, at the end of this fiscal year, we'll be at 21. Right. Right. That's point five. Yeah. Just to do it that way. I was just I'm just explaining yeah. so they know. Yeah. Right. So the total surplus is 21.5, and then this deduction. That's estimated to be 21.5 yeah. at the end of this fiscal year. Right. Yeah. That's what we have to going right now. Irene, you're not looking to get uh, us to look at option one or option two or vote on option one or option two? Yes, Trustee Deegan, um, that we'll need to know uh, tonight uh, which option the board wishes to pursue or move forward with. Okay. Can, we, can we ask another question? Sure. Uh, Marianne, programs at the library. Um, I know you were very diligent in looking at your budget and we appreciate that tremendously. And we know that the impact to a lot of the things in the village are things that unfortunately we're not able to control because of lovely inflation. Um, given the budget you've submitted, is there space there for you to continue your programs as they exist today and potentially expand them? Or are you running at skeleton staff? Um, thank you for asking that question. Um, I really feel that at this time we're, uh, while we might be able to gain some efficiency and structure our programs better to possibly make some increases based on scheduling, um, I think we're kind of at the capacity that we can produce right now for the full and part-time staff that we have. And uh, since our program line is, we don't really have a library program line. We take it from our publicity uh, funding, which is about $12,000. The Friends of the Library give us about $24,000 a year, uh, which we usually max out by about this time in the year. Uh, so we're really kind of at the limit that we can be for our current funding status. And do you believe that you're servicing, in terms of the program, do you think you're servicing all age groups in the village, all age groups of children in the village? So we do offer programs for um, for all the ages in the uh, community from, from birth up to uh, the high school grades. However, uh, obviously there's a number of ways that you can provide these kinds of services. Some kids are more interested in gaming oriented programs. Some kids might be more interested in crafts. Some really just wanna do volunteer uh, credit hours and things like that. That's as far as the teen kids are concerned. The younger kids, uh, we're gonna have some great opportunities for expansion especially if we were to have more staffing or program funds. But with the two new children's program spaces that we're gonna have in the children's room anytime now, uh, we're gonna have the opportunity for STEAM, which gives us science, technology, engineering, art, math, all in one dedicated space, and storytelling programs in another dedicated space. So it increases our rooms to do that. And if we have more, you know, more staffing and so on, we can diversify our programs further. So the answer is, I mean, there's always kind of an infinite number of ways you can serve the communities that have different interests. I'd love to see more sports related programs or more math related programs, or, you know, there's ways for us to, to add scale to this, but we need, honestly, we really need more personnel or we need to tap into the library program universe out there. The people that provide programs are diversifying. There are people that do programming, cooking programs for kids tailored to children that other libraries hire. We, haven't hi we have a, a general chef that does programs for all ages, but there's a great children's program called Chefs of the Future we haven't hired. So those are the kinds of scales and opportunities. So while I think we're serving them, it's a little bit lower level than I'd like to see us achieve in the future. Yeah, as long as you think you're serving all age groups, uh, that's fine with me. I had heard some comments from residents that there was some age group, but of course I've forgotten. I think it was an older age group, middle school, that didn't have many programs. But as long as you think each age group has some programs, that's great. 
I, I do. I mean, we're certainly our, especially our teen librarian, she's won two programming awards, one this year and one in a prior year for her uh, innovative programs. And um, she is constantly looking for new ways. Uh, she has a teen advisory board, so they give her current ideas and ways to uh, try to find new things to bring in the kids. So um, we're, you know, we're doing what, you know, we are trying to uh, reach more. But again, there may be an unserved group there, maybe like future engineers, maybe we're not doing enough STEM programs for older kids, you know, things like that. So um, like I said, I can't say we're serving every child, but I think we're uh, at least offering programs at every age level. And if you do find out what that other group was, you know, if you recall that, please feel free to share that over to me and we'll look into it. Thank you. Yeah, please don't take from this that I was suggesting there was not program for a certain age group because I don't remember the comments I was given, but I'll go back to those people okay. and find out what group it is that they thought were not being fully served by the program and then I'll let you know. Okay, that's okay. great. Thank you very much. So does the board have any additional changes or, uh, you know, approve the, the changes that were presented for the operating and capital budget? I'm fine with everything. You're looking for us to say we can go with option one or option two? Yes, that's the next step. First, I'm looking to see if there are any additional uh, changes to the operating budgets or capital budgets that were presented. Um, if not, then we can move on to then option one or option two. Well, just to reiterate, Paul, you're sure that you have enough to hit that, what was it, the two for one marker? Huh. It's two for one He's marker. keeping track right now. Huh? Take the money, Paul. Take the money. I just want to know that Can we yeah. you've got enough. I just I just checked this year's uh, capital planting program. We got 122 trees for forty-one thousand dollars. So it's seventy-five thousand dollars. That'll easily fund two hundred plus trees. And there is some existing funding in that account from previous years. I think there's a balance in there right now of about eighty thousand dollars. So if you add the seventy-five onto the eighty, we are we are well within what we need to take care of the trees. You can actually lower the thing. <laughs> Don't you start on me, Ralph. All right, I'm not going to ask again, and I'll. Have no, I, Trustee Marciano from asking again. Trustee Kelly, I do appreciate your interest and your concern, and if I had any doubts, I would ask. He'd like an extra tree in front of his house just. In <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we go to vote. Do any of the residents have any questions or comments that are here? Yes. Steve. Bob Wolf has comments. Uh, Bob, just wait one second. We're going to do the people in, in attendance here personally, and then we'll jump to the Zoom, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All the way over there. Thank you, Irene. Don't hurt yourself. Um, Steve Velotti, Meadow Street. Um, you mentioned the current surplus, I think you said 2.1. I see 1.6 up there. Can you just, am I? Let me. I'm sorry, which number are you referring current to? Current surplus, I think you mentioned 2.1. No, 2.9 of current year surplus, the current surplus you're utilizing. Okay. But what's the, the surplus, surplus from, from this year that's moving? It's 18.5. That's it, right? So we're estimating. Estimating uh, to be 3.2 million favorable in this fiscal years, at the end of this fiscal year. So of that, we're moving 2.9, almost $3 million of it. Okay, so then what's the 1.677 under the adopted? That's what it was at that time, but we're- Oh, that was last year, yes, correct. Okay. Um, the other question uh, that Trustee Kelly brought up was the um, fire training center. and. I I know it was discussed, you know, at several meetings, and um, I, I did raise the issue about possibly getting funding from other districts that would be training there with us. Um, but I, I never heard of a, a five million dollar number. Um, it was 
mentioned tonight about 1.7 about the cement work. And um, I was surprised tonight to see this 3.8. Um, you know, I know it was discussed about what was needed and why it was needed, and I'm not, I'm not really discussing that part of it, but the, the 3.8 and the total of 5 million is, is, I think, a little bit of a surprise to me. It was presented when the fire department presented their budget, and the breakdown of those numbers was included in the presentation that evening. You may not have uh, attended. It's in the budget book, um, and it's in the uh, presentation from the fire department, where it shows the five million, uh, the, f the full breakdown of the cost. Yeah, I, I'm not privy to a book. I know the slides. This is actually on the website, the tentative budget. This is just a tentative budget okay. uh, that is on the website. Okay. And this slide itself was included in the fire department's presentation when they presented their budget. So Steve, just for clarity, there is an existing amount of money that was bonded for concrete work at the dump. That, that's part of it. The other part of the expense would be the actual containers that make up the training facility. And then there are all these other expenses related to uh, water mains and uh, electric and other, so there's the whole, the whole thing, one, one package, but it has multiple components. Um, so the 1.8 isn't represented here, but it's certainly part of the existing capital, or 1.7, whatever the number is. Okay, well, thank you. And Mr. Lardy, just to further clarify, the training facility itself is roughly, based on some of the estimates we got from various vendors, anywhere from about 850,000 up to 1.1, million dollars. The rest of this is to uh, improve the site itself uh, between uh, sewer drains, um, the cement as was mentioned, electricity, or everything we need to actually run the site itself as well as also create the, uh, or I should say update the uh, municipality yard itself, the where the recycling and the garbage is dropped off as well because that would be shifted. So again, all this information will be presented once the entire plan is finalized and presented to the board. But again, it's not just $5 million for one particular building. It's the entire area, which will be broken down in the budget as well as presented. It should be noted also that some of these changes include uh, improved security, cameras, access, license plates, readers for the dump. So there are some DPW-related um, um, facility changes that kind of go along with it so we can secure the site better too. So. We're also moving the electric poles. We have 17 life of, of PSEG Long Island power poles in there. It's about $160,000 to move those off site. So that'll just make the yard work better anyway. We should do that whether we need the training site or not. So there are, there are pieces to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. so, so, Ralph, that's part of the 3.8, which you're just mentioning now, things that will help out D DPW. So I think when it's presented later, uh, just break that all out so that people understand, that's all. Because they're restructuring the whole yard, not just the training. And, I, and by the way, um, besides designing it, Mr. Veroni designing it, uh, Mr. Janello, they did consult with uh, DPW, uh, the people who use the yard, and also with the fire department. So the configuration was actually uh, designed one way and then it was flipped. It's actually much better, it's actually less expensive. Uh, the way they designed it and more functional for both right. the fire department and DPW. Thank you. Any other questions from those in attendance here in the audience? How about on Zoom? Bob, Bob Wolf. Yes. Bob, Bob Wolf, 63 Fairmount. A couple questions and a couple comments. Irene, I noticed in the income projection, you kept interest and earnings and interest and profit the same as this year. Um, what is our current cash balance at this time, approximately? Um, I don't have those numbers at the top of my head. It was $47 million at the beginning of the year. Do you think it went up or do you think it went down? Um, so, right, it, towards the end of the fiscal year, the number it tends to go down since we collect taxes the beginning of the fiscal year in June and then in well, so I'm saying it's 47 million before you, before you collected the June 1st taxes so it would have been about 70 million dollars sometime in June <clears throat> now if I take up let's assume you, let's assume you average fifty thousand dollars fifty million 
and uh, in cash. At 4%, I don't know what interest rate you're getting right now. I assume the money is safely invested in, in um, I don't know, short, short term cash deposits. But I think you're lowballing on the interest income, is my general comment on that. <clears throat> it may, it may be worth a second look. Okay, let's put it that way. Um, next question Mr. Kelly, you asked about the bonding, how the trending of opening of bonds. Uh, I, I have a, a little recap here. In 2016, we opened, we did about three, $3.5 million in bonds. We did it about $7 million in bonding in 2017. We didn't bond at all in 2018. We bonded $12.5 million in 2019. We, build, we, we bonded about $6 million in 2020, $4.9 million in 2021, nothing in 2022. Anything this year, Irene? No. Okay. So basically, we bonded, you know, bonding over the last that's six, seven years to about $32 million altogether over the past, since not 2016. Now this year, you're asking to bond $12 million, $12.7 million you want to bond this year. You mentioned at the last meeting, there was $4.2 million of previously approved bonding by previous boards. Why do you keep bringing that up if, it's not, if it can be overturned or should it just be uh, somehow taken off the table? You mentioned that number at the last meeting. What does it mean? Uh, did you say 12.2 or 5.2? 4.2 million in previously bonded projects. It's in writing somewhere. It's in, in, in one of your where, recaps. Where was that? I refresh my memory. I'm not recollecting that number. Uh, I'll find it for you at 7 in the morning, but you, 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 it's in print somewhere. No, what, we, what I included... In my first presentation, uh, when I went through the debt service schedule, was that uh, currently the village has about 5.2 5.2 million of authorized but unissued bonds. I'm, I'm only speaking general funds. I'm not speaking enterprise funds, Irene. I'm, everything I've said is is not does not include the enterprise fund. I'm not talking about the enterprise. Fund. Okay. I'm talking right. So when I went through the debt of the village, the existing debt of the village, I mentioned that. At the village currently has about 5.2 million of authorized but unissued bonds for existing projects. For example, the village hall HVAC work that's happening, um, and uh, I believe the. So, but but basically, these these are not bonded yet. That's correct. They're authorized, and they have not. We have not issued bonds for them until those projects have been completed. So so conceivably, completed or, or completed or whatever. So conceivably, we could have 12.7 of new. The existing bond balance plus $12.7 million of new bonds, plus conceivably, if the board approves these projects, we go higher than that. And then my question is, if it goes that high, what is, what is our payment plan for the next five years? We can do a five-year payment projection, so this makes, it makes no sense without a five-year cash projection of bond payments, using the assumptions we just discussed. Just so you know that your bond payments for the next year are about 3.9 million, goes down to 3.6 the next year, goes down to $3 million the next year. All we're doing is basically building up more and more debt on projects, not, not all of which I agree with. And again, you guys are the decision makers. I'll give you all the information you want, but I see the bond debt getting too high and I, and I don't see a projection to future cash needed for paying a financing costs. That's, that's my comment. Okay, thank you, Bob. Okay, thank, thank you. Comments on that? Or are you okay? Yeah, I just want to clarify the numbers. I'm looking at the presentation. Yeah, sure, so I had listed uh, four projects authorized through bond resolutions, but unissued that total $4.2 million. That's, that's the number I used, $4.2 million. $4.2 million, and, uh, and then... And potentially another 12.7 for this. That's that's correct. Yes. So can we can we cancel the authorization for the 4.2 million dollars? Can you repeat that, Bob? 
can we cancel the authorization for the $4.2 million? Let the, let the new try, let the new board no, those vote to put that into place. Project. Those are projects that are currently going on. Once those projects are completed, we will be issuing the bonds for them. Okay, so you can see we're looking at $6.9 million of bonds. 4.2 plus the 12,715 that you want for this year's projects. What's the possibility of uh, bonding $16.9 million this year, Irene? Again, if the board approves these projects, these will be projects that will be slated to be bonded in the future. Will you, prov will you be providing the board with a five-year payout of this, of this, of this $16.9 million? Plus the interest, of course. I think it's a fair question. So when we, you know, look at bonding, we of course look at the uh, the debt of the village and the incremental cost in debt service over the next few years. Can, you, can, can we see it? No, have you shown that to anybody? The bond, these projects have not been approved. So we have not completed that. But I'm asking for a projection. Assume they are being approved. Do a projection and tell us what they, tell the board what they need year by year for the next three, four, or five years. The numbers are available. If you just you know, you can do it better than I can. I don't know what interest rate to use. I don't know what term the bonds will have. But you 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 have a much handle better handle on that than I do. But I don't think the the board can make a decision. That without that information. Okay. Well, thanks for your input, Bob. Thank Anyone you. You're welcome. Zoom? Anyone else on Judy Zoom? Judy Courtney, would you like to? Hi, it's Judy Courtney, Three Tremont Street. A couple of <laughs> excuse me, a couple of questions from a non-financial person. So, um, work with me if you can. So, so Bob Wolf, to your comments. I, I do believe if if um, if I were voting on this budget, I would want to know what those projections are from a bonding perspective, especially as those numbers increase, et cetera, because it doesn't necessarily just mean what it costs this year, what we're bonding this year, but, you know, the go forward costs. So that's just a comment. Absolutely correct. Thank you. Um, a second comment on um, the conversations on the training center for the fire department. So. And I, I would agree with Charlie, I, uh, Trustee Kelly. I think that while I understand process, but I understand somehow we arrived at a a you know close to four million dollar uh, request, a bond request. I attended the fire department initial presentation where this was mentioned. I don't go to every budget meeting, but I go to a lot of them. The fire department did include this as a line item in their budget, yet. Do to hear the questions tonight from Trustee Kelly and others about what is in there, and then to hear um, Mr. Swazi talk about there's some DPW stuff in there and everything, I, I, I kind of feel like that's an amount that is being asked for that no one actually understands. And while I do understand that we are only approving this from a, you know, a, a potential, I guess is the right word, um, potential prospect, my concern is, and we'll see if this happens, right? What will happen is that then when uh, we go back or the fire department goes back and they get the drawings and all this and they come back and they present it. And then the comment is, well, you guys have already approved it. You know, you already approved the 3.88 million. So let's move forward. And you're approving something from a financial perspective that you don't even know what's in there. Like somewhere that 3.88 came up because- uh, Mr. Swazi knew that there were other things in there. So I'm very reluctant to approve that money without having more information there. I, I just feel like that is very uncomfortable for me. So that's my second comment. My third comment is more of a question. And Irene, I don't know if you know this. If, if we were not to use any surplus or reserve or anything else and just run this budget pure, right, what would the tax increase be for this year? So 7.6%. Uh, 
Right. And I think residents need to know that that's a huge tax increase. And while I'm glad we have the money left from last year, I remember lots of commitments about we weren't going to run the budget this way and we weren't going to use all this money that we had and we are going to run it much more purely than we had in the past. And I know that the money is there from a surplus perspective and we should push it forward. So that's what will happen. But that's almost an 8% increase from an expense perspective, which is tremendous. And we can't continue continue to operate that way. So that concerns me. So we can get away with it this year, but we can't keep getting away with this. So that's my comment. Thank you. I'm, I'm one, I thank Judy. On one of your comments, uh, I asked uh, Mr. Swazi he's to break down the cost for uh, the training facility in the yard so that it's very clear with everybody uh, what it's being worked, what would be worked on if it's approved? And how well, and, and, and I appreciate that. I do. So, and I think that's needed, but it feels to me that you guys should have had that before you were asked to, I, I, asked to vote on it. That's all. It just feels very vague to me. It's a $4 million request that feels really vague. So it'll be clarified. It's voted on a Monday. Any other comment from Zoom? Okay, so do any of the trustees have any comments on the capital budget or operating budget uh, for Irene? Any changes, recommendations, or thoughts? My recommendation is option two. Yeah, that's on the uh, general fund. We'll get that, yeah. Anything on the capital budget or operational budget? How, how is it that road and paving repairs are 5.8 million if that's an annual project and the bonding in prior years was so much lower than that? Is it really that that's called an annual project but it's not funded. So since about 2015, we've been playing catch up. Um, we have a schedule slash policy of trying to pave all the roads in the village every 20 years, which means about five, five uh, lame, is it? Can I help me out here? What's the lame line? Our target paving mileage is about 13 lane miles a year. Um, the past few years, we've fallen short for various reasons, including the increase of uh, gasoline, which is directly related to the production of asphalt. Um, so as those costs go up, the price of asphalt goes up. Uh, this past year, we had to defer three roads into this current year because of those increases. And, and in my presentation, on capital under this uh, DPW budget, I noted to the board that in past years, we had a constant $1.7 million that we were funding. And uh, and because of cost increases, I adjusted that in future years to over $2 million. But, but in this next paving year, we also expect to do Stewart Avenue, which um, if related to remarks about Meadow being wider, you know, you have a mile road with six lanes in it. So it's really like doing three major roads uh, like Meadow Street. So uh, while that could be deferred, you don't escape the cost in the out years. It just costs more down the road. So Stewart, Stewart is a big nut this year and we had the leftover roads from last year. Um, and this, this board has emphasized in the past that roads are very important. We can't do them fast enough, but it, but it costs money more this year than in the past. So it's a big number. It could be slightly less um, depending on how the final number for Stewart comes out. We estimated a two, two to two point five. That number could be revised downward. We'll only spend what we need to, of course. And in addition to Stewart Avenue, we did add three new uh, new. Uh, we added uh, North. 
Ling Manor Road. I call it North Avenue, Oxford, and uh, Wellington. Wellington. Quite question. I mean, I don't know if we've broken this out, but I think it would be educational for people in the village. Um, a seven plus cent, excuse me, a seven percent increase year over year budget seems significant, but in light of the current inflationary environment that we're facing between salary increases that in some cases are contractual, the raises that were long overdue that were given to the staff, <coughs> at the same time, energy charge, energy costs, which are through the roof. Um, I think it would be interesting to see a breakout because I think if you were to keep inflation flat, I would imagine that the 7% increase would be much lower, um, if not, not non-existent, right? It would be there, but not have anything of significance. And I think it would be important to break that out because I know particularly, for example, with Mary Anderson and the conversations we had on the library board, um, a lot of it's just baked in, right? There's nothing we can do. I know Commissioner Jackson had the same situation with some of his gentlemen on, on his staff and the like. So it is a big number, but relative to an inflationary environment where we're talking six, seven, and eight percent, okay, it's not that bad, unfortunately, or fortunately, excuse me. Larry, well said. And if you look at the slide, the actual expenditure increase is 5.81%. Okay, any other comments? All right. So why don't we uh, bring to a vote on the general fund? I'm going to. I just asked you to quickly look at option one and option two. Option one is uh, a tax levy percent increase of 1.99%. That's option one. And then if we use surplus to not raise the taxes, that would be option number two. So let's start with option number two. If somebody would, uh, I asked somebody to make a motion to approve option number two. I'll make that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Terry Deegan says yes as well. Okay, so it's unanimous. We'll go with option number two. Okay, Eileen? Good, thank you. Yes is unanimous. Yeah. Yes. Except that <laughs> the mayor's not here, but yeah. We can still have Trustee Kelly. Oh, sorry, Charlie. You okay? Yes, I was thinking about it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> The ball and the stick hit the base at the same time. I was a horrible first case on that. Are you okay with it, Charlie? Yes. Okay, so we're unanimous. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So that will be the uh, the budget that will be presented on Monday. Okay, thank you. Um, and again, just a reminder, the uh, next meeting is on Monday at 7.30. Okay. Well, before I close the meeting, uh, I wanted to thank all the village folks that I've worked with. So I'm going to start with Karen Altman. Karen, a pleasure working with you. Thanks for all you do. Uh, General Counsel Gary Fishberg, his team. I don't, know if Gary, I don't know if Gary's online or not. Recreation Commissioner Paul Blake. Thank you. Uh, sec, uh, Superintendent of Building Department, Giuseppe Ginovelli. Superintendent Ginovello. Yeah. How'd I do on that one, all right? You sing it, you know. <laughs> uh, our Police Commissioner and his terrific force, uh, Commissioner Ken Jackson. Thank you. Uh, and then also we have uh, our labor counselor. I don't know. I don't think he's on the line, but Chris Kurtz has done a very good job for us. I'd also like to thank our human resource um, head, uh, Courtney Rosenblatt. Thank you. Uh, and then the uh, our administrative course, Ralph Swazi. Thank you, Ralph. Great job. Uh, and Irene Wood, terrific job as our treasurer. And uh, Great job putting this all together. I'm pretty amazed at how organized this is. It's very good. Um, I also like to, you know, I'm fortunate enough to work as the uh, fire commissioner last year. So I want to thank uh, the fire chiefs, Chief Hearn, Assistant Chief, First Chief, First Assistant Chief Tolton, Second Assistant Chief. Um, we had, uh, I'm sorry. Donald. Yes. And I was also going to thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> and then also uh, Chief, Chief Moody as well. So, uh, and then, so this is my last minute, so I just want to make sure I extended my thanks to the staff. What a great job you do. 
And I also want to recognize John Baroni, our superintendent of public works. Uh, pleasure to work with all of you and your teams, and this is my last official meeting. So lastly, again, thanks. Great working with Trustee Kelly, Trustee Marciano, uh, Trustee Chester, uh, Trustee Torino, Mayor-elect Mary Flanagan, and, and uh, Mayor Cosmo Vinviali. All right, so just want to express my thanks. And did I forget some? Yeah. Oh, Terry. No problem, Tom. Terry, I never forget you. I apologize. He Not a problem at all. You, Terry. Yeah. Sending you a sending you a bear hug my, my way. All there good, and I, I appreciate everything, and I, I second everything you just said. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Well, with that, do I have a, a motion to close tonight's meeting? I'll make a motion. We close the meeting. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.